The split of Christianity and Judaism took place during the 1st centuries CE. While the First Jewish-Roman War, and the destruction of the Temple in 70 CE was a main event, the separation was a long-term process, in which the boundaries were not clear-cut. <laughs> Emergence as separate religious communities during the early 1st century CE there were many competing Jewish sects in the Holy Land, and those that became Rabbinic Judaism and Proto-Orthodox Christianity were but two of these. There were Pharisees, Sadducees, and Zealots, but also other less influential sects, including the Essenes. The 1st century BCE and 1st century CE saw a growing number of charismatic religious leaders contributing to what would become the Mishnah of Rabbinic Judaism, and the Ministry of Jesus, which would lead to Christianity. Historians continue to debate the precise moment when Christianity established itself as a new religion, apart and distinct from Judaism. It is difficult to trace the process by which the two separated or to know exactly when this began. Jewish Christians continued to worship in synagogues for centuries. Some scholars have found evidence of continuous interactions between Jewish Christian and Rabbinic movements from the mid to late 2nd century CE to the 4th century CE. Philip S. Alexander characterizes the question of when Christianity and Judaism parted company and went their separate ways as, "...one of those deceptively simple questions which should be approached with great care." <laughs> Twin birth According to historian Shay J. D. Cohen, "...the separation of Christianity from Judaism was a process, not an event." in which the Church became more and more Gentile, and less and less Jewish." According to Cohen, early Christianity ceased to be a Jewish sect when it ceased to observe Jewish practices, such as circumcision. According to Robert M. Price, early Christianity and Javne Rabbinic Judaism had their own developmental trajectories, rather than separating in a formal way. Daniel Boyeran proposes a revised understanding of the interactions between nascent Christianity and Judaism in late antiquity, viewing the two new religions as intensely and complexly intertwined throughout this period. According to Boyeran, Judaism and Christianity were part of one complex religious family, twins in a womb, for at least three centuries. Alan Siegel also states that one can speak of a twin birth of two new Judaisms, both markedly different from the religious systems that preceded them. Dating of separation According to Cohen, this process ended in 70 CE, after the Great Revolt, when various Jewish sects disappeared and Pharisaic Judaism evolved into Rabbinic Judaism, and Christianity emerged as a distinct religion. Other scholars argue that Christians and Pharisees broke decisively only after the Bar Kokhba. S revolt, when the successors of the Pharisees claimed hegemony over all Judaism, and, at least from the Jewish perspective, Christianity emerged as a new religion, yet, according to Robert Goldenberg, it is increasingly accepted among scholars that at the end of the first century CE there were not yet two separate religions called Judaism and Christianity. Early Christianity. Most historians agree that Jesus or his followers established a new Jewish sect, one that attracted both Jewish and Gentile converts. According to New Testament scholar Bart D. Ehrman, a number of early Christianities existed in the first century CE, from which developed various Christian traditions and denominations, including Proto-Orthodoxy. According to theologian James D. G. Done. Four types of early Christianity can be discerned, Jewish Christianity, Hellenistic Christianity, Apocalyptic Christianity, and early Catholicism. The first followers of Jesus were essentially all ethnically Jewish or Jewish proselytes. Jesus was Jewish, preached to the Jewish people, and called from them his first followers. According to McGrath, Jewish Christians, as faithful religious Jews, regarded their movement as an affirmation of every aspect of contemporary Judaism, with the addition of one extra belief that Jesus was the Messiah." The Ebionites were a Jewish Christian movement that existed during the early centuries of the Christian era. 
They regarded Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah while rejecting his divinity and his virgin birth, and insisted on the necessity of following Jewish law and rites. They used only one of the Jewish Christian Gospels, the Hebrew book of Matthew starting at chapter 3, revered James the brother of Jesus James the Just, and rejected Paul the Apostle as an apostate from the law. Their name Greek, Ebenhoioi Ebenhoioi, derived from Hebrew binum ebionum, ebionum, meaning the poor, or poor ones, suggests that they placed a special value on voluntary poverty. Paul the Apostle was, before his conversion, the main antagonist of Christianity. Initially he persecuted the Church of God, then converted and adopted the title of Apostle to the Gentiles, and started proselytizing among the Gentiles. He opposed the strict applications of Jewish customs for converts, and argued with the leaders of the Jerusalem Church to allow Gentile converts exemption from most Jewish commandments at the Council of Jerusalem. The Jerusalem Church was an early Christian community located in Jerusalem, of which James the Just, the brother of Jesus, and Peter were leaders. Paul was affiliated with this community. Paul and Barnabas were sent from Antioch to confer with the Jerusalem Church over whether Gentile Christians need to keep the Jewish law and be circumcised. James played a prominent role in the formulation of the Council's decision Acts chapter 15 verse 19 NRSV that circumcision was not a requirement. Paul says that James, Peter and John will minister to the circumcised in general Jews and Jewish proselytes in Jerusalem, while Paul and his fellows will minister to the uncircumcised in general Gentiles 212 growing anti-Jewish sentiment among early Christians is evidenced by the epistle of Barnabas a late first early second century letter attributed to Barnabas the companion of Paul mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles although it could be by Barnabas of Alexandria or an anonymous author using the name Barnabas in no other writing of that early time is the separation of the Gentile Christians from observant Jews so clearly insisted upon Christians, according to Barnabas, are the only true covenant people, and that the Jewish people are no longer in covenant with God. Circumcision and the entire Jewish sacrificial and ceremonial system have been abolished in favor of the new law of our Lord Jesus Christ. Barnabas claims that Jewish scriptures, rightly understood, serve as a foretelling of Christ and its laws often contain allegorical meanings. While 2nd century Marcionism rejected all Jewish influence on Christianity, Proto Orthodox Christianity instead retained some of the doctrines and practices of 1st century Judaism while rejecting others. They held the Jewish scriptures to be authoritative and sacred, employing mostly the Septuagint or Targum translations, and adding other texts as the New Testament canon developed. Christian baptism was another continuation of a Judaic practice. Topic. Jewish and Christian Messianism Topic. Most of Jesus's teachings were intelligible and acceptable in terms of Second Temple Judaism. What set Christians apart from Jews was their faith in Christ as the resurrected Messiah. While Christianity acknowledges only one ultimate Messiah, Judaism can be said to hold to a concept of multiple messiahs. The two most relevant are the Messiah ben Joseph and the traditional Messiah ben David. Some scholars have argued that the idea of two messiahs, one suffering and the second fulfilling the traditional messianic role, was normative to ancient Judaism, predating Jesus. Jesus would have been viewed by many as one or both. Jewish messianism has its root in the apocalyptic literature of the 2nd century BCE to the 1st century CE, promising a future anointed leader or messiah to resurrect the Israelite kingdom of God in place of the foreign rulers of the time. According to Shay J.D. Cohen, Jesus S. failure to establish an independent Israel, and his death at the hands of the Romans, caused many Jews to reject him as the Messiah. Jews at that time were expecting a military leader as a Messiah, such as Bar Kokhba. <laughs> First Jewish-Roman War and the destruction of the Temple the First Jewish-Roman War, and the destruction of the Temple, was a main event in the development of both early Christianity and Rabbinic Judaism. Full-scale open revolt against the Romans occurred with the First Jewish-Roman War in 66 CE. In 70 CE the Temple was destroyed. 
The destruction of the Second Temple was a profoundly traumatic experience for the Jews, who were now confronted with difficult and far-reaching questions. After the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE, sectarianism largely came to an end. The Zealots, Sadducees, and Essenes disappeared, while the early Christians and the Pharisees survived, the latter transforming into Rabbinic Judaism, today known simply as Judaism. The term Pharisee was no longer used, perhaps because it was a term more often used by non-Pharisees, but also because the term was explicitly sectarian, and the rabbis claimed leadership over all Jews. Many historians argue that the Gospels took their final form after the Great Revolt and the destruction of the Temple, although some scholars put the authorship of Mark in the 60s, this could help one understand their context. Strack theorizes that the growth of a Christian canon the New Testament was a factor that influenced the rabbis to record the oral law in writing. A significant contributing factor to the split was the two groups' differing theological interpretations of the Temple's destruction. Rabbinic Judaism saw the destruction as a chastisement for neglecting the Torah. The early Christians however saw it as God's punishment for the Jewish rejection of Jesus, leading to the claim that the true Israel was now the church. Jews believed this claim was scandalous. According to Fredrickson, since early Christians believed that Jesus had already replaced the temple as the expression of a new covenant, they were relatively unconcerned with the destruction of the temple during the First Jewish-Roman War. See also Topic Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Sources Topic. 